John chapter 14, uh, verse 1, and uh, that's going to be our text for today, uh, although we're, we'll look at various texts as, as we go along here this morning. You know, in uh, May of 1995, a 34-year-old construction worker by the name of Randy Reed was doing some final welding on top of a nearly completed water tower in one of Chicago's suburbs. At one point, Randy unhooked his safety belt so he could reach over to some pipes, uh, but at the same moment, a metal beam slipped off a nearby crane and bumped the scaffolding that Randy was standing on. The scaffolding tipped and Randy lost his balance. He fell 110 feet to the ground below. Now, in landing, he just missed a pile of rocks and construction debris on the ground. Instead, he landed face down on a pile of dirt. A fellow worker saw the whole accident and immediately called 911. When the paramedics arrived, uh, they couldn't believe their eyes. They found Randy completely conscious, moving and complaining that he had a sore back. Now, even though he went through such a horrendous fall, Randy still maintained his sense of humor because as paramedics carried him on a backboard to the ambulance, Randy asked them just one thing. He said, hey guys, be careful, don't drop me. <laughs> yeah. By the way, when he arrived at the hospital, he was examined by the doctors and they discovered that only injury he suffered was a bruised lung. Friends, I think sometimes... Our faith as Christians resembles Randy. You know, God protects us from harm within a 110-foot fall, but we're still nervous about three-foot heights. By that I mean we have faith that God will save us from hell and death, but sometimes we're afraid that he won't be able to protect us from the difficulties and the chaos of everyday life. And so we ask ourselves, the question, who do we trust? Our text for today is one verse, although we will look at a variety, but we'll begin with John chapter 14, verse 1. John chapter 14, verse 1, reading from the NIV. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, other translations say, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Why don't you pray with me, please? God, we live in such uh, tumultuous, ominous, chaotic times. Things are always changing and not always for the best. Life seems scary at times. And so, God, we want to see you through it all. And I pray that today you will speak to us through your word in such a way that our trust in you will strengthen. Build our faith, Lord, and our trust in you. Bless our studies, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You know, one of my favorite stories, which I'm sure I've told before, is about a young paratrooper who was learning to jump and he was given these instructions, of course, from his instructor. His instructor said, first, jump when you are told. Second, count to 10 and then pull the ripcord. Third, in the unlikely event that it doesn't open, pull the ripcord for your backup chute. And fourth, when you get down to the ground, a truck will take you back to the base. So the plane ascended to the proper height the men started peeling out, and the young paratrooper, uh, he jumped when he was told to jump. He counted to 10 and pulled the cord, but the chute fell to open. He proceeded to the backup, backup plan. The second chute also failed to open. Oh, man, that's just great, he said. I bet the truck won't be there when I land either. <laughs> In whom or what do we put our trust? You know, perhaps we need to have a better understanding of this word trust. What does trust mean? Well, Webster Dictionary defines trust as a basic dependence on someone or something. 
belief that something will happen or someone will act in a prescribed way. So hear this, though, for the Christian, trust is found in our unswerving belief that the God of heaven will indeed work on our behalf to bring his perfect will for our lives into being. You have to trust with your entire being that God has your back and that he will help you and that he will take care of you regardless of whatever situation you might find yourself in. Why? Because God knows what is best. But to truly embrace what he has planned for you, you have to fully put your faith and your trust in him. You know, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, uh, plans to give you hope and a future. You know, as you live out these crazy times that we are living in today, it's helpful to remember that God has a plan for your life. And this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, is just such a reminder of that very thing. Our trust is not foolish, for our God is both faithful and good. You know, William Penn, the founder of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, was well liked by the Indians. And once they told him he could have as much of their land as he could encompass on foot in a single day. So early the next morning, he started out and he walked until late at night. And when he finally went to claim his land, the Indians were greatly surprised, for they really didn't think that he would take them seriously. But they kept their promise and gave him a large area, which today is part of the city of Philadelphia. William Penn simply believed what they said. Should you or I do any less with God? We can take God at his word. And we can trust him to do everything that he has promised to do. And the scripture is loaded uh, with promises for us from God. You, the thing to do is to dig into scripture, and I want you to grab a hold of this. Dig into scripture, acquaint yourself with the promises of God, with his long-suffering faithfulness to the Israelites, to Abraham, and to all of us. Get to know the character of God. That's essential. It's so important because your joy and willingness and trust in him will abound as you do that. So get into the word and get to know God. And that's where we learn about God is in the scriptures. Get to know the character of God. You know, God wants for you to trust him. My friends, our text in John chapter 14, verse 1, again, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. You know, Jesus was calling the disciples to trust God through any and every circumstance of life. I mean, Jesus was about to be crucified and his disciples would, would be scattered. But Jesus was telling them to trust even when they did not understand because God is still at work. He's still at work. You know, these words are also true for us today. In spite of the difficulties and hard times, we must stand firm in our trust for the living God. That message is for you and me today. Stand firm and put your trust in God. You know, trust can be difficult. If I were to ask you individually, uh, most of you, I'm sure, would very quickly say that you trust God. But there are times when, when trust isn't so simple. Trust in God means we believe in that which we cannot see, and sometimes we, we don't even understand. There are some things that we are not going to understand, and we must simply put our faith and our trust in him. Trust in God is literally against our human nature. I mean, we want to be in control of any and all situations. So trust in God means that we have to admit that we are not in complete control. It has been said that we have to let go and let God. I'm sure that many of you have heard that phrase, but how often do we practice it? How often do we just let God take care of our needs, especially in difficult times? We have a need for trust. 
So we need to place our trust in something or someone that we do it every day. We trust our cars to get us to a destination. So we do put our faith and trust in, in things. We trust employers to deliver our paychecks. We trust our doctors to heal us, to heal us from our illnesses. How much more should we trust God? You know, there are examples in the Bible where others have totally put their trust in God. Moses at the Red Sea. Do I raise my staff and part the Red Sea, or do I not? Joseph in the Pharaoh's prison. Joseph had to sit down day in and day out, wondering if God uh, would come to his rescue. But Joseph trusted, and God came to his rescue. David facing down to Goliath. David put his trust in God when, when coming up against Goliath, and we all know the end of that story. You know, Jonah in the belly of the well. Jonah didn't just sit in the belly of a well and wait for God. No, he prayed. He started praying. And Jonah said, from the depths of the grave, I called for help, and we know that God rescued him. Peter and John before the Sanhedrin. Peter and John stood before the Sanhedrin and and proclaimed that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which one must be saved. In all those instances, these men of faith put their trust in God. Now, there were women as well. Rahab, she was a prostitute in Jericho, but she helped two of the good spies, you remember? Uh, ten were bad, two were good. She helped the two spies escape when Jericho fell. Her family was saved from the enemy uh, just as the two spies had promised. God blesses those who trust him. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. Once again, let go and let God, and he will make your paths straight. You know, God wants the best for us. My friends, we must realize that uh, life sometimes, though, is beyond us. It's beyond us. Disasters strike and, and tragedies happen in our lives. Life can be hard. Life can be uncertain. And some things are beyond our control. And you know, it's in times like this, life is beyond our understanding and we are left with raw emotions and tough questions. I'm sure that many of you ha have been there. Answers are beyond us as we grapple with the question, why? Why, God? Why this? Why now? Why is this happening uh, to me? So in times like these, who is it that we trust? Well, we put our faith and our trust in God. And I want you to know that life is never beyond God. It's beyond us at times, but it's never beyond God. Nothing, and I mean nothing, that we go through in life is beyond God. The truth is we must rely on God in every situation that we face in life. Times that just don't make any sense in human terms, we need to trust in God. And you know, the more senseless life becomes, the greater our need to put our trust in Almighty God. God wants your all. The writer of Proverbs says it simply and clearly that God wants your full and complete trust. He wrote, trust God with all your heart. Trust God with all your heart. So we must hold nothing back. We must surrender to him all that we are, all that we have, all that we uh, may become because without the presence and guidance of God, then we'll go nowhere. We'll go nowhere. You know, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says to cast your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. God cares for each and every uh, one of us. He's very intimate with each one of us. Today, the question that you have to ask yourselves day in and day out is who is it that I'm putting my trust in? You know, we've trusted many people in, in many things in our lives. We hear from the government, we hear medical people, we hear scientists, we hear all kinds of uh, conspiracy theories, we reason things out on our own, and we just simply don't know what 
to do or what to believe. You know, from a personal standpoint, we often trust our families. We have trusted our friends. We've trusted our employers. From a public nature, we have trusted our national uh, security services. We've trusted our military. And what do you do uh, with that? Because what do all these things have in common? Well, sometimes they have failed our trust. Many of us, if not all, have felt the disastrous results of failed trust within our families, by our friends, uh, by, by employers, uh, by government. You know, confidences are shattered as a result. Tears are shed, feelings are hurt, trust is damaged, and bitterness often grows. You know, God wants you to trust even when you do not understand. God wants you to follow him when the future seems uncertain. You see, we're just a few weeks away, as many of you know, from the 20th anniversary of 9-11, a tragic day, a day that will live in our hearts and minds of many forever. There have been personal tragedies that, that still live in your hearts and in, in your minds, but God sees us through each and every one of those situations. He always sees us through. God is so faithful. He's promised never to leave us or forsake us. Sometimes we, we need to get back on uh, track. We need to get on focus. You know, we go to the eye doctor when we're not seeing as well as we used to. And we might get new glasses or new contacts. Well, my friends, it, in order to stay focused, we need uh, to do as the author of Hebrews says, and that is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him and endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite poems. I've shared it before. Uh, it's written by James Thomas Fields. I don't know if any of you have heard it, but it's entitled The Captain's Daughter. The Captain's Daughter. We were crowded in the cabin. Not a soul would dare to sleep. It was midnight on the waters and a storm was on the deep. Tis a fearful thing in winter to be shattered by the blast and to hear the rattling trumpet thunder cut away the mast. So we sh shuddered there in silence, for the stoutest held his breath, while the hungry sea was roaring and the breakers talked with death. As thus we sat in darkness, each one busy with his prayers, we are lost, the captain shouted as he staggered down the stairs. But his little daughter whispered as she took his icy hand, isn't God up on the ocean just the same? as on the land. Isn't God up on the ocean just the same as on the land? And then we kissed the little maiden and we spake in better cheer and we anchored safe in harbor when the morn was shining clear. Sometimes we lose our focus and we forget who it is that we're supposed to put our faith and our trust in. My friends, it's only when we completely trust God to give us the power of his direction that we become aware of the power of his presence. You know, Psalm 46, if you wouldn't mind to turn there, Psalm 46, I would like to read just a few verses, but it's worth the turn, okay? Or bring it up on your iPhone if you want. Psalm 46. If you are in your Bible, it's in about the middle of the Bible. If you are on your iPhone, I don't know where it is, out there on the cloud somewhere but you can bring it back, I'm sure. Psalm 46, and I'd like to read to you verses uh, 1 through 7. <clears throat> God is our refuge and strength. He is an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her and she will not fall. God will help her at a break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. 
He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. You see, God is so worthy of all of our trust. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. He is a stronghold in times of trouble. You know, Psalm 46, um, 1 through 7, uh, explains all of that and explains it well. But Psalm 9, verses 9 through 10, those who know your name, speaking of God, those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, never forsaken those who seek you. My friends, when trials arise and, and we go through the difficulties of life, we must place our trust in Almighty God. If you do not put your trust in God, there is no access to his power, his mercy, or his life. And without trusting God, there is no comfort and no peace, no strength and no relief. The promise of God, he said he will never forsake those who seek him. The promises of God made so long ago is still valid today because God has never broken his promises. He is true and faithful to his people. You see, our treasure is love from the God who created love. Our treasure is grace and peace from the God of all comfort. Our treasure is security from the God who never changes. Our treasure is protection and provision from the God who is all powerful. Our treasure is acceptance from the God who knows everything. Our treasure is eternity from the God who sacrificed his own son that we could gain it. God is asking only one question this morning. Do you trust me? What is your answer to that question? You know, we've got a little time. I normally don't show a video quite as long as this, but I've got about a four-minute video uh, that I'd love for you uh, to watch. Don't, don't fall asleep, okay? If you can't somebody fall asleep next to you, nudge them. Four-minute video. My friend, you can trust God today. He is good, and He is good all the time. But as you focus on His goodness, don't miss His greatness. He is unparalleled and unprecedented. He is the centerpiece of civilization. He is the superlative of all excellence. He is the sum of human greatness. He is the source of divine grace. His name is the only one able to save and his blood is the only power able to cleanse. His ear is open to the sinner's call. His hand is quick to lift the fallen soul. He's the eternal lover of us all, everyone. And you can trust him. He supplies mercy for the struggling soul. He sustains the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes with the wounded and broken. He strengthens the weak and the weary. He guards and he guides the wanderer. He heals the sick and cleanses the leper. He delivers the captive and defends the helpless and he binds up the brokenhearted. He's for you and you can trust him. Jesus is the key to all knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance and he's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway to glory. And yes, you can trust him. Jesus is enough. He's the all-sufficient king. He's the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness and he's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. And yes, again, you can trust him. And rejoice in this, my friend. He is a sovereign king. 
There is no gauge to measure his limitless love. There is no barrier to block his blessings outpoured. He is enduringly strong and he is entirely supreme. He is eternally steadfast. He is immortally faithful. He is imperially powerful and he is impartially merciful. He is Jesus, God's Son, and you can trust Him. I wish I could more accurately describe Him to you, but He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't outlive Him, and you can't live without Him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't fault him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't conquer him. And the grave couldn't hold him. My friends, he's the Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. He's the God of the future and the God of the past. And we rise to speak his name again and again. Jesus, Jesus, He is Jesus, He is for us, and we can trust Him. And if He is for us, who can be against us? You know, Dr. S. M. Lockridge, uh, that was a uh, a uh, excerpt from a sermon, a pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in San Diego, California. He's retired now. You know, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, Jesus was telling his disciples about living in the Spirit. And he went on to say in verse 33 of chapter 16 of John, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in this world you will have trouble. But take heart. Why? Because I have overcome the world. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. The spirit that indwells in each of you. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 31 14 and 15. But I trust in you Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies from those who pursue me. We need to trust God in the little things and in the big things. You know, Paul stood up in the meeting of the Veropicus in Athens, Greece, and speaking before a group of Epicurean uh, Stoics and philosophers, he said, as recorded in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, for in him, that is in Christ, we live and move and have our being. Colossians 1, 17, in him all things hold together, and in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, he upholds the universe by the word of his power. I asked you earlier to remember this, and I pray you do. This is kind of a take-home. It's on your bulletin if you picked one up. Dig into Scripture. Acquaint yourself with the promises of God, with his long-suffering uh, faithfulness to the Israelites, to Abraham, and to each and every one of us. Get to know the character of God. Can you memorize that last scene we just saw there, that's the character of God. And your joy and your willingness in trust in Him will abound. 